It is an awesome show, and you're guaranteed to get one great match every week on NXT, and most of the time it's from the Divas division, and that says a lot uh, from these up-and-coming Divas, which you wouldn't expect a lot from, but they are really impressive. Paige and Sasha Banks are some of my favorites from NXT, and that's why I think they deserve call-ups to the WWE. One match that I'm really looking forward to seeing, hopefully sometime in 2014, is Paige versus AJ. I mean, Paige has been so exciting on NXT as women's champion and all the feuds that she's been involved with. She was the diva that gave Summer Rae her opportunity to transition from a ring announcer into an in-ring competitor on NXT before she came over from NXT to Raw as a valet for Vandango and betrayed the name Mrs. Vandango. And then shortly after that, she became an in-ring competitor, which was something I was waiting Summer Rae to do because I thought Summer Rae was a better wrestler than she was a valet, and she kind of had to get out of that rhythm. Now, she's continuing as a valet, but she's still wrestling on and off again on Raw and SmackDown. Hopefully, in 2014, she's going to be wrestling more, and it was because of her feud with Paige. She got that opportunity on Raw and SmackDown. And she impressed a lot of officials, and uh, from the premiering on NXT and going from there to Raw, uh, she seems to have a very prominent future ahead for her. I'd love to see a prediction that was made on a Google image that was uploaded a couple of days ago of a six-pack challenge for the Divas Championship at WrestleMania, where you would com combine Divas of the past and Divas of the future in one match. I think that would be a great way of promoting the Divas division, and it would be a very effective way of putting over Total Divas. There are a lot of Divas on Total Divas who need to be put over more than what they were put over for Season 1 of Total Divas, and I think one Diva who needs to be put over more is Ava Marie. She is very promising both as a Diva and as an in-ring competitor, and I think in time she's going to be a future Divas champion. She has the feel of like a Maria Canales kind of character who is very slowly breaking into her craft in the wrestling industry. Remember how long it took Maria to start competing in the ring. It took her just as long as it took Candice Michelle, but once Maria started competing, she was one of the best competitors they had in the Divas Division, and it was beyond me why they never gave her at least one women's championship reign with how popular she was. It was beyond me why they didn't give the women's championship to Candice Michelle sooner than what they did. Maybe it was because they had minimal faith in both Maria and Candice Michelle, but I really think that Ava Marie fits the character mold of a Maria, and she kind of resembles Maria in a lot of ways, which is why I'm really excited to finding out what they're going to be doing with Ava Marie in 2014, and there is a chance we could see Ava Marie in the six-pack challenge at WrestleMania 34, the Divas Championship, if it comes into fruition. Ava Marie versus AJ is also a possibility for an opponent for AJ to have at WrestleMania 30. I've enjoyed watching the progression of AJ's career, and I'll never deny for you as a radio show host and columnist over this microphone that I am a fan of AJ because I am, and if I were telling you that I wasn't a fan of AJ, I'd be lying to you. No matter if she's a fan favorite or a heel, she's one of the most effective divas that you have in the division, and I've said time and time again, I've kind of been quoted for saying that AJ is the most unpredictable character that they have in the entire divas division these days because you really don't know what AJ is going to do from one minute to the next, which makes her character that much more fun to watch and that much more unpredictable. If you were to define AJ's career and character in the WWE, one word remains synonymous with her character and that word is unpredictable because there's really no other way of defining AJ's character. I mean, yes, we've had some unpredictable characters through the years of the WWE, but AJ's character has to be the most unpredictable that they have right now for either division in the WWE, and that says a lot with how far AJ's character can go and how far AJ's character can be taken in the WWE. I think she's a great representative, and that's why WWE have given her as long of a reign as champion as she has had. Another interesting match at WrestleMania 30 will be AJ versus Stephanie McMahon because of how much this has been teased on editions of the Raw Super Show. You remember all those face-to-face -face confrontations that Stephanie McMahon and AJ had prior to AJ having several defenses of the Divas Championship. Obviously, that was teasing something, a potential match, probably between Stephanie McMahon and AJ for the Divas Championship. That would be very interesting with how Stephanie said that she gave AJ the opportunity to be Divas Champion, and she could very easily take the championship away from her. That match has never happened before, and it would be a very effective way of putting over both Stephanie and AJ, and I think that would be a very fun match to see at WrestleMania. I mean, there are so many ways, so many story paths the Divas Division could head down for WrestleMania 30. I mean, you'd be hours 
trying to decipher what is the right path for the Divas Championship and the division to take, but I think with Season 2 of Total Divas up and coming, and with how AJ is obviously going to be a big part of that, and with how AJ has been representing the Divas division in the months prior to WrestleMania 30, I mean, we have a lot uh, to look forward to, and sooner than later, they're going to be on the same level of the Teen and Yonkers division or any other division that has anything to do with women's wrestling. I mean, a lot of people look at the Divas division and they say there's room for improvement in the Divas division, but what doesn't have room for improvement in the WWE? There's everything uh, this day and age that has room for improvement. I mean, wrestling will never be what it was back in the 1980s, early 1990s, ever again. And there's always room for improvement, no matter if it's the Intercontinental Championship division, no matter if it's the Divas Championship division, there's always room for improvement in the WWE, and there's never going to be a day where there isn't room for improvement. I mean, if it's not the Divas division, it's something else that needs improvement. But the Divas division is slowly but surely getting back into a rhythm, a rhythm that it once had in the early thousands when Trish Stratus and Lita were representing the Divas division as effectively as what they were. And that's the reason why Trish Stratus was a six, seven-time women's champion in the WWE and described as one of the greatest in-ring competitors when it comes to a female competitor in the WWE and why she is a Hall of Famer. And some of these Divas can be Hall of Famers in the very near future if they keep on the path they're on. I mean, they have very promising futures, and all you have to do is check out NXT every Wednesday on WWE.com. That is an example of just how promising of a future some of these Divas have, and that's why I'm a huge fan of the Divas division, because I believe they have this promising future. All you have to do is give them the benefit of the doubt, which I am always doing, despite all the criticism we read about for columns that columnists and journalists may throw up on their websites, despite all the critical reviews we're hearing on radio shows uploaded on YouTube. I always go ahead and give the benefit of the doubt to the Divas Division because they do need time to improve their skills. They need longer matches than 5 to 10 minute long matches on editions of Raw and Smack. And even if we had a 15 minute long Divas Championship match on an edition of Raw or SmackDown, that would put over the Divas Division better than what it's been put over in recent years. And I think longer matches for the Divas Division is one huge thing that needs to happen because it will give the Divas Division a chance to be put on this display in a way that it's never been put in display before, and I think one thing that needs to happen are creative storylines for the Divas Division. Storylines that make you wonder what's going to happen from week to week, and storylines that are going to make you want to tune in the following week to find out what happens as a follow-up. Even if you just had a big follow-up from a pay-per-view title defense of the Divas Championship, one major thing uh, that it has going for it is the fact that these title matches now are being contested on pay-per-view and not in the editions of Raw and SmackDown as much as they were in previous years. Uh, usually what you would see is a Divas Championship match happening on Raw and SmackDown as opposed to on a pay-per-view, and some pay-per-views wouldn't even have a Divas match, but now at least we're seeing the Divas Championship contested and defended on pay-per-view, and it's been that way ever since at least 2012, which is a huge thing for the Divas Championship and the entire division. Putting AJ in title matches on pay-per-view against the likes of Caitlyn, Natalia, the Bella Twins, so many of the top Divas in the division, the new town the issue Divas, is a great way of doing it, much less putting her in a match with the new town that you should be because you're putting over the new town that you should be with, and you're putting the Divas division in a position where it should have been five or six years ago. Championship matches on pay-per-view. I mean, how many times in the early thousands would you see a championship match on pay-per-view that had anything to do with the Divas division? Probably once every three pay-per-views you would see the Women's Championship defended on pay-per-view. Now every month you're seeing the Divas Championship defended on pay-per-view, and this is a trend. This is kind of a habit that needs to continue for the division because only probable things can happen for it. So the Divas division, as much negative things as it has going on for it, it has just as many positive things going on for it and things that I look forward to seeing improved in 2014. So looking ahead to 2014 with AJ as your representative of the division and the up-and-coming premiere of Season 2 of Total Divas, it is looking to be a very prominent and very successful year in 2014 for the Divas division as long as you keep that championship on AJ for an additional few months. We're up to the seventh month now of AJ as Divas champion on June 16th. Her reign culminated and on December 16th we celebrated the six month milestone of AJ's character being Divas champion and I thought that AJ's character should have been Divas champion sooner than what she got it. I've been saying this for over a year. If you're not going to do anything with AJ's character, have her in a program with the WWE champion who was CM Punk. At the time I started saying it and they went with that idea and they broke that off and then AJ became the Raw general manager. 
that went nowhere and then the last thing for them to do was to give AJ the deepest championship and that has been the most probable thing you have done for AJ's character and that is something that WWE Creative needs to be credited for. If we don't give WWE Creative any credit for doing anything, one thing we should at least give WWE Creative the benefit of the doubt for doing is giving AJ this reign as Divas Champion. Even if she just has this one reign as Divas Champion and never has it again, I think AJ is one of the best Divas Champions that we have seen in the last two or three years, at least ever since the inception and unification of the Women's and Divas Championship. She's certainly one of the top five best Divas Champion who have represented the Divas Division as a Divas Champion. She's just as good as a Michelle McCool or a Trish Stratus was when they were representing the division, and I think in years to come, AJ is going to witness the best years of her career, not only by herself, but by her entire wrestling fans who have joined in her career and her success ever since day one. She came from NXT Season 3, and since then, she's been proving her critics wrong, and I love that. When it